much money did we spend? Tons of freaking money. And you know what? I regret nothing. You know how many sleepless nights I had trying to make sure everything would make it on time? And I'm talking about everything. Chairs, sofa, the TV, the speakers, the slates, making sure Jan would empty the whole damn thing on time. I mean, I was trying to do it all for crying out loud. I even went to an old storage to check out a chair. Look at the damn thing, it looked like a dog was chewing on it. Anyways, you know what? I can finally breathe. So, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you guys to our latest project, the Ultimate Living Space Makeover. Wait, Jan, cut it. Let me tell the story from the beginning, man. Everything started about a month ago. I went into Jan's house. I saw the mess he had going on downstairs, and I told myself, I gotta do something about this. And we planned it. Oh, did we plan this whole freaking thing? Three seater like that might be clean. With the Are we still going black? We're going black, right? It's really cool. Really clean. Yeah, thousand dollars. Yeah, I had no idea what I was getting into. You guys probably saw that within our day in the life video, which was partially spent complaining about the budget. A few days after that, we forced Jan's brother to help us clean some of the mess he had in their basement. And when I say mess, I mean a mess. There's quite a lot of cleaning to do here, but we'll get it done. We indeed cleared out most of the living area. The week later, we pulled the trigger at a store called Must and got all of it delivered within a week, where we got the bulk of the items we needed for the TV area. That includes the sofa, the accent chair for the living room, the ottoman, the rug, coffee table, media unit. There was so much. Meanwhile, that was happening. I went back to my parents to get some packages. Amran was one of them, and they were nice enough to send a few lighting equipment for the makeover. However, the packages and the spending did not stop. It was graphics cards, monitors, peripherals, PC parts. I was tired of spending so much money. But deep down, I knew it was going to be worth it, especially if we got proper light bulbs for the basement. So we bought these bulbs last Friday for $74 each. Now we found them on Amazon for $49. We're probably gonna do a price match or something like that. I know it's like 20 bucks or 25 bucks still something look in the grand scheme of things 25 bucks isn't that much but money is money that same monday we added some more debt to our credit cards like i'm telling you it was spending after spending after spending it just didn't stop full transparency made me sick to my stomach we were reaching out to local brands like ergon office to help us out with things like the chair and brands like delta hub flexi spot just trying to pitch in so we could get it all done we even spent $500 in books. Look, at least we got a $25 refund for that single bulb we bought, which we then invested into getting a U-Haul. Yeah, a U-Haul because our IKEA countertop and our slates from the wooden hub were too big for the R6. Whatever, we eventually finished our shopping spree and dropped it all off at Jan's house. Look at it. It looks like a freaking mess down there. I mean, look at me. I didn't even know what to do about it all at the time. All I knew was that the following days were going to be rough putting all of this mess together. I couldn't help thinking to myself, God help us. Dirty you whole truck. <laughs> <laughs> so today is May 19th. It's finally the day we put everything together, although I did not know we were gonna paint this one. <laughs> Don't cook too much, my friend. Come back, it's all done. I finished. I'm more video. I am losing my damn mind with this project. John and I have an inside joke with this thing. He hasn't seen it yet, but I'm excited for him to see it. I swear to you guys, I'm losing my damn mind. Today is Sunday, the 21st. Meanwhile, I'm, I'm here trying to build this PC. Jan is at home unboxing some things. So I'm gonna let him do that and I'm gonna do my thing. Insane massive shout out to Asus Pro Art. Honestly, they've hooked us up with so many amazing things. That PC, by the way, was given by them last year. I loved it. So I'm like, yo guys, please send me some more stuff. And that includes this beautiful RTX 4080. Amazing.
I'm gonna put a nice little podcast and I'm gonna get to build. much the story of my life i had to go get a replacement smaller cooler the same thing they make 240s this is a 360 it just won't fit anywhere here it's it's too it's too thick so the ram modules sort of interfere this is just too small so funny because i use my pro art monitor to test my computers and it's also our filming monitor for when we connect the camera because it has all these presets and it's freaking awesome now this is the scary part because i'm always hoping that nothing blows up it's not like i'm building a rocket or anything like that but you know it's still scary even though i've built like a few pcs already so now we just pray it all works Ta -da! i don't remember the last time i did a build and things have gone smoothly it's always problem after problem. Anyways, I'll figure it out. Bro, I had a feeling, bro. I had a freaking feeling. Yes. Bro. Oh, nice. Holy. Yeah. yeah. So what did you do yesterday? I just kind of like set up this just so we can have an idea and base on how we're going to start placing things around. Okay. Set up, I got the prints. Nice. Those prints are really nice. Three more over there. Beautiful. So big. John actually did a really good job at putting things together, especially things in the living room, which includes our whole surround sound system. Yeah, I've always been a bit of a surround sound system freak, and since the bar, sub, and rear speakers are wireless, and he lives in a house, I said, bet, I want all of it for the living room area. Anyways, Monday was an insane day. First of all, I'm actually happy the paint turned out really nice. The only thing is that because it's so dark, we definitely needed to install a light source in there. Frankly, I just can't get enough of the overhead setup. By the way, this lighting setup is just a simple light source mounted on a wall. Our setup consisted of an Amran 150C. I couldn't have picked better. I mean, this thing does it all. I'm talking about different lighting modes, Bluetooth compatibility, different Kelvins. It's like their T4C light bars, but on steroids. So yeah, before you ask me where I got this massive light source, Amran, along with the Aperture SE Dome. With good lighting came time to build our standing desk. I think I got pretty good at building these. It's like I'm basically a pro, although flexi spot do make it easier. Like their manual is great. The pieces actually make sense, including their tabletop with pre-drilled holes, which I didn't use because we needed something different. But I'm happy to say that their standing legs do work flawlessly with IKEA countertops. So we installed these, we also installed our cable management unit on this tabletop, we installed the legs, the controller, a power bar we got at Canada's computer, their cable management cover. Up until this point, the whole desk was looking pretty sick. Of course, it didn't take long before I installed the gradient hue strips on a desk like this, it's easy. And with the way I had set up the cable management modules to hold cables, even easier. That pretty much allowed us to mount pro art monitors on this bad boy and I had no idea but these actually come with their own desk mount arm. So aside from making sure the arm was dead center, it actually took 2 seconds to install the whole thing. Look at all that. Like if you guys think we always work clean, that's not true. It's crazy but it's advancing and this part of the setup is going to look absolutely 
insane. And insane was indeed the right word. You know, building something like this takes a really long time. I've come to appreciate it all even more than before. We like put our heart and soul into making everything look insane. From the cable management aspect to having the right peripherals, the cool aesthetics, making a video like this has to be the most satisfying thing ever, apart from driving a Porsche, of course. there but we're almost done the desk is looking absolutely insane we're gonna route those wires finish the chair and finish this whole set and then we'll do the reveal like tomorrow i know you guys might find this stupid but this is probably the most stress i've had in a very long time trying to make something like this happen i literally put like all my freaking effort into making these youtube videos just so they're worth it for you guys to watch. I really hope this one was like, you know, a big one for you guys. Cause oh my God, I even put like copyrighted music and everything. I really wanted everything to be like perfect. I hope you guys enjoy. For all the ladies in the place with style and grace, allow me to lace these lyrical dishes in your bushes. Uh. Who rock grooves and make moves with all the mommies. The, the back, back of the club, club. sipping my wet is where you find me. What? The back of the club, macking yeah. holes, my crew's behind me. Uh. Mad question asking, blunt passing, music blasting. But I just can't yeah. quit because one of these homies Biggie got to creep with. I love it when you call me Big I guess this is where I welcome you guys to the fifth episode of the set of makeovers, except this wasn't only a setup but a whole basement. A basement dedicated to creating content, chilling, bumping to music, just a nice spot for Jan to get some editing done and work on his own personal content. I think in total we spent around $16,000. Listen, I know it's a crazy amount of money. I mean, this is his living space at his own house. I gave one of my good friends a custom PC, so I thought maybe Jan deserved a whole basement. Anyways, I had a crap ton of fun building this, especially when it came up to cutting up the slates and installing them. These, by the way, are pre-made slates from the Wooden Hub. They sent us a ton of slates for me to check out a while back, and I finally decided to install them here. It's actually the same slates I bought a few months ago for the office. I fell in love with how well built these are and how easy the installation is. This time though, I got some in American Oak. The goal here was to damp part of the setup in terms of sound since these do come with foam as their back panel. It's actually such a clever way of soundproofing a room and it really adds that nice connotation to the space. It really separates the living area from the setup area. Now, don't get me wrong, with a color like this, you'll most likely get a good amount of light bouncing around, but not enough which is why all over this space we've got some aperture lights. Okay, you guys ask me about this all the time, T4C tubes, T2C tubes. This is what I use in the background of most of our videos. We use these lights to light things up, have cool effects going on, implement different lighting colors to a scene. These can do a lot of things. Plus, the tubes are wireless because of their batteries which have a good amount of battery life. These are just great, especially since they connect super well with Citus Link. It's the app we use to connect all of our Amran and Aperture products, including our domes. Now, to shine light on this flexi spot setup, I didn't go with an Amran 200X. Actually, they've got something way better and I'm kind of jealous I didn't get this for the studio. The Amran 150C. Like you guys saw, it's an incredible light source for something like this. You have full color control, access to 2500 Kelvin to 7500 Kelvin. It's really well built, has a nice LCD interface, connects super nicely with the Citus Link app. Quite important since we got the Google Hub in order to automate most of the lighting in here. It's literally the perfect lighting source to shine light into an area like such. 
an area where again we set up this whole custom flexi spot desk i did buy a desk off of them as a gift for someone a few months ago and i was really surprised with their prices i wanted to test it out and turns out they are super worth it so i got another one for jan except this one here is the flexi spot e7 paired with a bunch of accessories the only thing i'm bummed out about is that i didn't get to use their table which would have resulted in allowing us to use their drawer system but look their cable management unit did wonders Altogether, I mean it supports up to 335 pounds, it's a carbon steel desk frame so it's like super stable especially with all of this tech on it. All Jan wanted was a reliable unit that could deliver a height range from 22.8 inches to 48.4 inches with the ability to set a few height presets to simply improve his comfort level. So that's why I gave them a try. Besides the fact they offer 15 years of warranty, I also find it cool that they have a USB port to charge devices conveniently. Now on this desk we've got the mother load, two Asus Pro Art monitors paired with an insane Lee and Lee O11 mini custom PC. This is pretty much a powerhouse, I mean an i9-12900HK with a 4080 and 32GB of DDR5 RAM, all that powers these Pro Art 4K monitors that are common certified. These are dual 32 inches PA 329 CV Asus Pro Art monitors. I wanted something with 100% sRGB and 100% Rec 709 white color gamut, mainly because Jan will be using these to edit our videos. Not only that, but because his daily laptop is indeed a MacBook, I wanted a monitor where he could have DP over USB-C with 90 watts of power delivery. These are also marketed as HDR400, we all know what I think about that, but they also really do have true colors right out of the box. We didn't want to have to spend time calibrating this whole thing. Plus, it's a bonus knowing these come with its own desk C-clamp. Don't get me wrong, their monitor arm would have been just fine, but we all know how much I love things to look minimal. Another reason why I went for the Lee and Lee Mini, look at this thing, it fits our Noctua 4080, which is probably the biggest GPU I've ever seen. It luckily fits my 240mm radiators from Asus. These are the ROG Ryu 3. 240 millimeters radiators. They pair super well with their Pro Art motherboard and Chewy. Well, Chewy actually pairs well with the Noctua. The motherboard is just a really clean piece of hardware with proper usable aesthetics, like example, the fact that it has a PCIe release button or the fact that it has proper ports, ports that allow me to connect my personal latest favorite keyboard, the Mode Envoy or Envoy. Not sure how to pronounce it all, but all I know is that it looks absolutely freaking beautiful. Have you guys seen this? A keyboard with wood accents, a clear case, a silver backplate, proper keycaps, like when have you ever seen something like this? I honestly was so in love with it as soon as I got it last week and I made a TikTok about it. Back to the street. Yeah, well this pairs with a new mouse we've been wanting to try, the G502X Plus by Logitech. I mean, this here looks like an overpowered MX Master that also conforms to gaming. Jan's been playing way too much Valorant lately, so I thought, let's get him a mouse for work and gaming. All of this sits on this Delta Hub best mat I got a while back. It's actually really nice, I really like it, and it seems like it's the only brand making wool mats with proper rubber feet on them. It also seems like it's the only brand making a 3-in-1 laptop sleeve. Now I brought this here for Jan's MacBook, I got the 14 inch but they also have this 16 inch. I wanted something slim and practical for him with a nice trap included because he loves side bags. This fits pretty much any laptop as long as you get the right size, it's water repellent, has expandable pockets, it's a 3-in-1. A 3-in-1 because it's a bag, a sleeve and a, a workstation so it's pretty cool. Now in terms of audio setup, nothing too complicated, I do want to go over it when we make our desk setup accessories video but we've revamped it a bit. We did things differently this time around and went with an Audio Technica pod mic, Yamaha speakers with floor stands, a complete audio interface and III headphones with leather ear cups and not Alcantara this time around. There's a lot on this desk to talk about including this SanDisk unit, however, 
I want to keep this for our that setup accessories video because I want Jan to spend some time with all of this before recommending it. What I can recommend is shopping at a store like Must. Massive shout out to them for actually letting me film in their store. They were super friendly, never gave me a hard time. Montreal businesses can be uptight and they hate cameras. Anyways, this is where we got most of our furniture for this living space, except for our ergonomics chair of course. This here is the U2 ergonomic chair with an ash color combo and smoke rust leather on the seat. Our ergonomic options were simple, we have the seat slider and the back high adjustment we went with white because we really wanted to match the speakers and the slates sort of have an item that would transition from the desk setup to the living room although i think this japandi storage solution does it best we wanted a storage unit that could divide both spaces we took advantage of it and added a sony vinyl player paired it with a marshall speaker unit decorated it, added some nice prints, it's a nice setup to have storage when needed so we really thought it was the perfect move. As for the plants, fake by the way, oh actually Jan added some real ones to fill the space. Most of them were bought at Boucler, including these pots, feathers and small accessories going around the space. Now, as for the living room, I think the main star of the show is this 65 inch A80 L TV from Sony. This here is the latest Sony 65 inch A80 L OLED TV that we paired with a Sony HT A5000 soundbar, their SW3 subwoofer, and their RS3S wireless speakers. We wanted to make the ultimate home theater setup mainly because Jan's dad loves watching movies. The LG C2 would be an equivalent option as well, but after some research, it seemed like people were happier with the color accuracy and picture processing of Sony's OLED panel. So, you know what? I was like, heck, let me have Sony send this whole setup for us to showcase it. I do wish the panel was slightly brighter, but because we are in a basement, it really isn't a big deal at all. I think it would have been a massive killer in my condo, but definitely not here. The TV has this matte anti-glitter coating. It's sharp, delivers great contrast and motion. I've been wanting to give Sony a try and I think we'll be very happy with it. If it's a TV you want me to review, let me know. Also, check this out. Sounds insane, right? Well, that's all the A5000, SW3, and RS3S speakers. These all connect wirelessly together. The bar does connect via eARC though. Everything else was super easy to set up. As long as the soundbar is powered up, the subwoofer and rear speakers will try to recognize the bar. There's a manual linking option by the way in case things don't work out, but they did for us. As a whole, the TV is well mounted, shines light with the hues gradient light strips for 65 inch TVs and its cables are routed through the wall. We wanted to sort of have this floating like panel on this Japandi like media unit we also got at must. For now, we decorated this and there is not much in there since we just built this. Jan doesn't think he will ever have a console here since he now has his own custom PC to game, but it's a place he will be using to chill especially since the coffee table comes in clutch for that. I mean, look at this, you can lift it up and treat this as a mobile workspace definitely feels nice sitting on this four piece sofa. It's not really a cloud sofa but it's definitely very comfortable. The materials feel right, the color is nice and it matches the aesthetics. Especially the rug we got, the accent chair and the automat. I think as a whole everything comes in super nicely together and things feel tidy. If I were Jan though, I would have hanged a bunch of Porsche frames on this wall though but meh. I guess those IKEA frames look just as good. And that's how everything pretty much went down. I mean, I was so stressed for the past like month and a half trying to make sure everything would make it on time. There are some things that were like almost late, but we got it done. And one of the most stressful things actually was cutting the slates. They were actually super easy to cut. I don't even know why I was stressed. I guess I needed the machine and everything like that. So anyways, never done that before. It was fun. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video. We spent tons of money on it. So yeah, I guess like and subscribe for the algorithm. I will see you guys all next week. Take care. You can finally breathe now. Wow.